said, in every use of official power, the president is now a king above the law. With fear for our democracy, I dissent. End of quote. So should the American people dissent. I dissent. Well, Joe Biden. There, CNN's Arnett Science is at the White House. She joins us uh, once again this hour. A pretty direct and what you might describe as dramatic response from the president, or perhaps, you know, it's perfectly understandable, um, you know, his tone there, Arlette, but his defiance uh, also sort of in the face of what is this image of a president refusing to be pushed off the greatest political stage after what was a disastrous debate performance. What's the, what's the atmosphere at the White House at this point? Well, Becky, President Biden is clearly trying to turn the attention back to one of the central arguments from his campaign, warning that Donald Trump is a direct threat to democracy. All of this as the campaign continues to grapple with the fallout after his halting debate performance last Thursday night. Now, this speech marks the first time Biden was speaking at the White House since that debate and since returning from Camp David, where he spent a few days with his family, which is encouraging him to stay in this race. The speech uh, lasted just under five minutes. The president read from a teleprompter and took no questions, but he did try to use this moment to warn of the stakes of this election, saying that the Supreme Court's ruling would simply embolden Pres former President Trump to do whatever he pleases whenever he wants. And he was trying to encourage voters to use this as a rallying moment to dissent when they cast their votes in November. But even as the president was speaking out there publicly behind the scenes, Biden's campaign is fielding calls from anxious Democrats and donors who are concerned about what the path forward will be for Biden, uh, especially if he remains at the top of the Democratic ticket. They held a phone call, top campaign officials last night, with about 500 donors where they uh, talked about uh, the president, defended his health, and said that his candidacy remains on track. But you are starting to hear uh, from some Democrats signaling signaling some openness to replacing Biden at the top of the Democratic ticket. One of those was Congressman Mike Quigley uh, of Illinois, who earlier today said that ultimately it's a decision that's up to Biden himself, but he also needs to take into account the impact mm. it could have, not just, not just on his own candidacy, but on other Democrats as well. So still many questions about the path forward for President Biden at a time of high anxiety within the Democratic Party. Mm. Yeah, and, and Quigley there referring to the, those who are known as down ticket, you know, those who uh, uh, will be up for election or re-election uh, again uh, in November. And we're talking about Congress men and women. And there is a real concern amongst Democrats as to just what sort of impact uh, Joe Biden will have on, on their campaigns and their success uh, going forward. I want you to have a listen to what journalist Carl Bernstein had to say last night. I'll let stand by. These are people, several of them, who are very close to President Biden. They are adamant that what we saw the other night, the Joe Biden we saw, uh, is not an, a one-off, that there have been 15, 20 occasions in the last year and a half when the president has appeared somewhat as he did in that horror show uh, that we witnessed. So Carl Bernstein, you know, talking about this kind of, you know, the, the, the noise around Biden at the moment. What are those in Biden's inner circle? And this is important because ultimately there is an inner circle who he listens to and ultimately takes advice from, as we understand it. What are they telling him and advising him about the next steps? Well, you're right, Becky. There is this inner circle of Biden's advisors, many who have worked with him for decades. And so far, what we have heard uh, repeatedly from the campaign is that there are no plans uh, for the president to step down, that he intends to debate Trump in September, that they will see this through until the November election. But as we were talking about a little while ago, a, a lot of people uh, are waiting to see what the polling will show relating to Biden's re-election bid, but also what the polling shows relating to those House and Senate uh, races where Democrats are locked in competitive uh, contests. Now, ultimately, 
this decision about moving forward will be one that's up to Biden, but also his family. First Lady Jill Biden, of course, is perhaps his closest confidant, and she doesn't like to call herself an advisor, but she does counsel him. And so this will be a highly personal decision uh, for yeah. that family as they are considering the next steps forward. And so far, they have indicated that they are encouraging him to run and they want him to see this race through through November. Following the fallout from the historic Supreme Court decision granting former President Donald Trump some immunity from prosecution, Manhattan prosecutors said today they would not oppose Trump's request to delay sentencing in his New York hush money trial, which was set for July 11th. Trump is seeking to get that conviction overturned now. ABC's Perry Russom has the latest from Washington. Sources tell ABC News former President Trump is working to have his felony hush money conviction in New York thrown.